Yeah, thank you again, uh, Clement, to invite me to this webinar. Um, I will first introduce uh, you a little bit about the background of our company, about New Air Pharma, um, to help understand where, uh, what kind of work we do and also how this relates or what uh, challenges we faced in uh, selecting the ELN. Um, we are a small biotech company um, focused on drug delivery. Uh, we're located in Bonn, Germany, have around currently 20 employees. And our core technology are engineered protein capsules, or ENPCs, uh, which are protein capsules um, which can be used to package any kind of cargo, for instance, DNA or RNA, and deliver this cargo across the uh, blood-brain barrier. And we do uh, nearly all of um, the production and anal analytics and R&D in-house. Um, so we have multiple teams which you will see later that we need to, to connect also in the documentation process. Um, the status quo in our lab or in our company was um, mostly paper lab book or uh, let's say a combination of a paper lab book and some digital data that's produced. And um, I was tasked to identify and implement uh, a digital solution. Um, and one of the hopes um, they were weekly in this in this area that uh, we wanted to create a searchable database and hopefully find some hidden links in our data using some big data an analysis and um, save time in the process. Um, I've divided my talk into basically four sections which are also um, the, the, the steps we went through in selecting and uh, doing the market research for an ELN. And the first one is really to identify what your lab needs, um, meaning you have to understand the workflow of your lab, how the current documentation process works, and um, identify already possibilities where the digital solution uh, could fit in. The second part is the market, market research. Um, in particular, if you're new to ELN, um, then you need to understand what the market actually offers, what features uh, they have, and um, what you're basically going into. And these two are actually um, uh, yeah, iterative. So if you understand the market better, you might need to uh, analyze your, your lab in a different way to choose the best solution. And I will spend most of the time on the ELN selection process, um, where we started with a long list of candidates, narrowed it down to approximately three uh, for in-depth testing, and then uh, select a criteria uh, how we could evaluate the best solution for us. And very shortly, I will talk about the implementation, which we started with a small group of, of people and then subsequent, uh, subsequently increased as the database filled. So I will start uh, going into more detail on the first part. So the uh, uh, understanding of the status quo and this means really uh, to understand and to really know your processes. That means for the different teams, individual teams, but also how the different teams communicate, share experimental data um, or um, substances in that, uh, that way. And for this, you, of course, need to talk to your colleagues. Um, then just going um, through a couple of details that you need to focus on or that we focus on. Um, is the format and the requirements of protocols, meaning are there, for instance, uh, SOPs, um, the data generation, where data is generated, in which step and in which format, uh, the documentation, of course, so what goes into the digital lab book or in the paper lab book, if you have it before, and what doesn't. Um, that means some of the data might be already digital in, in a sufficiently documented form. Um, the review proce process, do you have a review process? Um, the four eyes principle, who needs to see the data or the documentation at which point, and maybe who needs to sign it off. And then also think about the data analysis that's done um, across multiple experiments or maybe even across your whole process and how you would like to share the data and, and to track it. Um, what I also found that many of the um, instruments nowadays come already with some databases, so you need to think how to integrate those, or if you have any other digital system like a, a LIMS, how you would in integrate this in the whole workflow with the ELN. And um, our observations um, was that we actually could divide um, our teams in uh, many three categories that had very different or 
relatively different um, needs and demands. Uh, one is the standard production, which has very defined processes, defined set of analytical methods, use SOPs, of course, and uh, generate data sets that are basically just growing, but don't really change in what goes in there and what doesn't. Um, the documentation is also very standardized format. And um, in terms of collaboration, like the uh, talk or the experimental uh, collaboration between teams, they usually transfer the material and the QC data to other teams. So they are kind of on, on their own, more or less, um, but on a very uh, strict uh, standardized process. Then we have multiple teams that do R&D. They often have various protocols and use different methods or combination of methods and uh, resulting also in different data. And those are relatively or quite collaborative in their efforts, so data needs to be shared um, more frequently as opposed to standard production. And then there is the analytics department, so, so my field in the company, where we have a set of analytical methods that have uh, specific SOPs, but we are part of different experiments of R&D, uh, standard production, and so on, so it's more service-like. And as I said, we are dealing actually with a lot of instrument databases. Right, so the next part was to uh, understand the market of ELNs. Um, first, of course, is what are the cost of digital solutions in general? So um, if you do some, some research on general digital solutions, you will see that there are some document management systems that are uh, in a different price category than, than uh, ELNs, for instance. Um, then you uh, look at the standard features of ELN, so what do most of them offer, um, where do they differ, and then you can get an, a feeling about what is essential for you and which features are nice to have. And so you can really start thinking about how you will represent your process inside the electronic lab notebook. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you, you can iterate between this market, um, market research and the uh, status quo or the needs analysis. So how um, do you start this part, the, the market research? Um, you can get recommendations from, from colleagues or friends uh, also working in the industry, what are the, the standards? Um, but you just also find uh, comparisons on the internet. Um, yes. And um, then you start contacting vendors to organize a demo. And what we found that in this demo, it's really useful to have as many of the final users um, as possible and to really get their feedback at this early stage, um, which helps you in the pre-selection of the ELN. Um, so for us, for instance, one of the more complicated uh, ELNs was, was ruled out by the, the end users immediately. Um, and it also helps to introduce um, the users or the team to the concept of ELNs in, in general. So it's kind of a bit of an expectation management. Um, and um, it helps you to identify members for your testing team, which is, as you will see in the next slide, quite important. You can also uh, create some test dummy data just for a brief uh, understanding how you uh, enter data or how, how data is displayed. Um, but this uh, is relatively brief. Now the real test comes in this late slide and I will uh, walk you through step by step. So. Um, I will get to this more complicated part soon. So the first thing is, um, or what we did was a shortlist uh, generation, and we used certain criteria, which we called must-have, that uh, definitely need to be fulfilled. So this could be, for instance, the price, let's say, for 10,000 uh, euros per year per 10 or 20 users. Um, there are other must-have criteria for us, for instance, for instance, that we in the beginning needed an on-premise um, variant of an ELN, not a cloud version, um, or that you have a backup system. And this helps you to narrow down your, your list, your, your long list, to a, a couple of candidates. And then you can start assembling your testing teams, a team ideally from different teams in your, in your lab so that they have a different perspective than yours. Um, and you can initiate the test trial. And for the test trial, um, you or what we did, we uh, came up with criteria that are important for us. Um, some of them we could actually just derive from the product description already. And for others, we needed really the in-depth testing. Um, 
these features could be related to costs, for instance, the, the cost of the ELM um, or the hardware, some uh, IT uh, features, let's say backup or how the migration uh, to another database would be supported. Um, of course, very important, the uh, regulatory compliance. And there it's of course also important to uh, not only have the features ready, but also have some support on the validation process. If you if you need to really validate your system, um, and then the kind of the fourth category are the ELN features. Um, yeah, I, I will show you a couple of those here. Um, what we did then, uh, we came up with this list, relatively uh, long list of criteria, and um, we weighted them according to what is the most important for us, uh, giving a ten to the most important features we we wanted and a one to the least important one. And this actually step is a good way or a good step in which to involve the decision makers and um, discuss with them really, um, and let's say the management, what the company needs and um, hopefully find a consensus on how you score your uh, criteria. And these criteria are then used um, for uh, analyzing which is the best solution. And you then estimate them basically each criteria, um, how good each ELN or each solution compares to the other one. Um, if uh, the, the winner gets basically five points and the worst gets one point. And then what you can do in this you know, decision matrix or what we do did uh, is you then multiply the weight um, for each solution uh, with the rank and you end up for each criteria a criterion with a score. And when you sum up all these scores, you get a, a nice um, a quantitative evaluation which ELN or which solution fits the best for you. And um, what you see here is we included actually also the status quo in the analysis, which is really important um, to, to first justify that you move into a digital solution and then also identify areas uh, where you will uh, improve. And uh, as you can also see here from this course, the two, uh, the paper and the lab book um, combinations really are, were in our case, worse than the ELMs. Okay, so that was the selection process. And for this whole uh, ranking, what you, what you do, you really need in-depth testing. So here's really where you spend most of the time at, or where we spend most of the time at. And uh, we in depth, did the in-depth testing of three solutions. Um, finally selected uh, the best of those for us. And um, here are some of the um, best practices we derived in encouraging the implementation, successful implementation in our company. Um, one thing is find good examples of users um, because this helps you to get more people on board and um, maybe even involve um, other users in the training. Um, this I mentioned before, you have to fill the database. Um, the more the data there is inside, the, the more useful it does it get. Um, this also for us meant that we prioritize data that is useful for most users, for instance, protocols or um, inventories of the samples or the reagents we use. Um, I think um, for me, one important thing was to keep up to date with the implementation pro uh, progress, both on an organizational level, so where do, did the whole process uh, process stand, and on a technical level. So, if your teams are that different, um, you need to help to find them solutions for representing their processes optimally in the ELN. And um, from the management point, uh, it's very advisable to involve the leaders in the implementation, uh, the team leaders, and um, set deadlines for certain milestones or for the complete transition. Yeah, and that's the end of my presentation. And thank you for listening. Jonas has been kind enough to share with us uh, an empty Excel uh, uh, spreadsheet that you've seen uh, that they used for evaluation. Uh, so we will, so everybody in this webinar will have, it, will have a chance to download it uh, and we'll send it to you over email as well. Uh, so that you have that, uh, I think it's a, a really uh, a great way uh, to do this, and I think it's really important. And a lot of 
a lot of uh, customers we see they they do the list but they don't do the weights which i think is really important uh, um, and it requires you to have like a really honest conversation within the team uh, um, what's really important uh, but yeah my question jonas um would be um uh, my question would be so you really you really encapsulated well all the technical parts but did you take into account any of the let's say soft factors like i don't know that maybe one eln would get higher score or slightly higher score but the other ones like i don't know people felt closer to or something was there room for this uh, I have to say, fortunately, our kind of emotional choice uh, matched very well with the score. And um, I think that's, that was also the consequence of really asking people for uh, the testing group for each of the criteria, uh, how they felt about this and, and what was really the best solution. So if you I think if you break it down on this kind of micro level, um, yeah, the people understand their decisions better. That's at least our experience. Okay, so basically, if it overlaps, then it means that the weights were set up properly, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Kyle, uh, do you have anything to add or was it uh, like, sim did you go through the similar process? We did go through a, a similar process, uh, but I've got to say, Jonas, this is fantastic. It's it's um, very in depth. Um, I love the formality of it, um, and it's a great standard work document for for other organizations to leverage, which is which is just a great offering to the community. Um, I did have a follow up question similar to what Clemen had said, and admittedly, it's a tricky thing to codify or apply apply a value to. But I was curious if you took into account or or even had discussions internally about things, some of those softer uh, values like customer support. So personally, one of the things I've been really impressed with from Sino has been their customer service team. Um, of course, you don't always know that until you get into, um, you know, working with a company a little more closely. But I was curious if, if um, you had considered that or, or had some discussions around, you know, how do we value customer support? And then how do we evaluate um, a given ELN's ability to provide that support? Yeah. I mean, we or myself, I choose to be kind of the, the connection to Sino to the customer support um, and also um, help the people in the onboarding. So um, this was basically just for me to decide um, if I'm happy with the support. And um, since our lab is mostly German, um, also language wise, it was the, I think, the right thing to. To do so we didn't really evaluate on a user by user base if they are happy with the support but um, yeah probably i took this into account but not uh, in the metrics thanks Jonas. i appreciate that and then I, I just wanted to add as well i really like the the landscape that your tool provides right so even the comparison to say a paper notebook you know it, you often, um, there are people that just tend to favor that approach. And I think this is a great tool for really showcasing, yes, there may be no cost, for instance, with a paper notebook, but, you know, look at all the value that you're leaving um, on the table by avoiding a digital solution. So um, fantastic presentation. And, and thanks again for sharing that document. Yeah, thanks. I couldn't agree more with Kyle. I think this was really great that you actually took the status quo into consideration. Uh, because some people just, uh, uh, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to compare uh, uh, apples to apples sometimes when you think about paper, but when you really go down to, you know, what are your requirements, you're going to have to choose one system over another, so you should be able to compare. So.